Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato Danger 5 random random run where we take a random character and a random weapon and try to beat Danger 5 with it. Going for win streaks here so I'm about to spoil the results of the previous video so if you haven't watched that one then definitely jump back and take a look at that before going on to this one. But I'm about to spoil it now. All right, so we are we won our last one. We're on two and one for a 66% win rate, which is definitely lower than I would have liked at this point. But hopefully we can bring that one back. One with cryptid using ghost weapons. That was pretty fun. Um, I feel like I didn't play that run incredibly well, but we made it through anyways. And I think one of the things that's kind of interesting about this as a challenge is that I have to learn how to play the build and what decisions to make on the fly. And I'm also having to learn sort of how uh, good heuristics for making those decisions as well while I play through these random random runs. And you get to see my heuristics and my sort of choices evolve in real time as you watch these challenges. So hopefully that is cool and interesting to you all. All right, let's jump right into it. See if we can get a better win streak. I'm going to skip the doctor here because... I feel like the difference between these two weapons is not significant, and um, I already randomed my weapon in my doctor guide, actually, so I'm going to take a, a reroll on rolling the doctor. Um, also, just to quickly go over the ground rules again, I will be randoming a character, randoming a weapon. I have to use that weapon. I don't have to buy all six and stick with it forever, but I do have to use that weapon and make it the focus of the build. Um, but I will re-roll characters that don't have an interesting random weapon or weapons that I've already covered, that kind of thing. All right. Apprentice is a really interesting one. I think there are a bunch of weapons here that could be quite difficult to make work so i'm very interested to see what we get the most powerful options are slingshots the one i use for my guide and any primitive weapon is pretty good for apprentice because you want to gain the hp um any weapon that doesn't give us hp could be quite difficult to use so i'm interested to see how this works all right we got screwdriver so we are going to get engineering um and melee damage, so our screwdrivers should hit pretty hard, but these give us no defensive stats, and it has the same problem of an engineering build that we had in our one loss, where I lost with Wrench Speedy. That being said, the Apprentice has fewer negatives with engineering than the Speedy does, but I think this is still going to be a very difficult run, so I'm looking forward to it. Let's see if we can make this one work. Want to stay away from my landmine, but maybe try to pull enemies towards it. I guess actually I should just be focusing on hitting as many enemies as possible with these attacks and picking up materials. 52 on our first run is not good. You really want to hit more than that. I'm going to grab some harvesting here, because of course starting with harvesting is always nice. And then we do want to buy... You really want to max engineering on a screwdriver build, but I don't think it's worth locking the duct tape, and losing max HP is so bad for the apprentice, uh, especially without a primitive weapon giving us more. Something that's really interesting on apprentice is do we want stuff like Scar early? We could get a, a lot of bonuses from this, but it also decreases our HP. Um... I think I'm going to pass on this. I really would like to roll for screwdrivers here. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver. Great to find Peaceful B, and I will definitely actually just take that here. And then I'm going to roll for one more screwdriver. The reason I'm taking that, of course, is that it's harvesting. And we don't care about losing melee damage. Particularly because we're generating a ton of that. Lock another screwdriver. Go to wave two. I will say that we are a little lucky because we have hordes for our first two boss waves which is going to be much easier to play with screwdrivers than elites would. One nice thing about Apprentice is that we get a lot of melee damage anyways, so our screwdrivers will still hit pretty hard. I'm okay taking damage here, I just wanted to make sure I'm maximizing my um, 
income. Let's re-roll this and see if I can find some max HP. That's the thing I want the most, and I'm going to be taking that every time it shows up, even in low numbers. Broken Mouth is the perfect find here. Do I want to just buy another Peaceful Bee to get harvesting going? I think I will, actually. We can afford to wait a little while on finding screwdrivers. We do want to level them up, but because it's a tool, um, we're very likely to, f to roll those in our shop, although I have failed to roll them in this shop, but that's okay. I'm going to lock this screwdriver, lock the broken mouth, and I will lock the lemonade as well. It's just a really good item. One nice thing about Apprentice is that because we get so many free stats, we can really focus in on just defensive stats and getting our weapon sets online because we don't have to be buying damage. Especially for Engineering Apprentice, we don't need to buy attack speed or percent damage or anything. Although because we scale both melee damage and engineering and like actually are going to end up with our screwdrivers hitting fairly hard, we might be able to just build some percentage damage and still have reasonable damage output. I'm going to reroll this, looking for max HP again, and yeah, I will continue to just take these level 1 max HP finds. Um, 5 harvesting will get us up to 20, so that is very appealing, although 3 engineering, even though we are building that with our levels, is quite useful as well. I think I'm going to... Just take the HP, though. I think we really need to prioritize that so heavily. I'm going to grab this, and I want all of these items. Can I afford them all? Not quite. And I also want to throw in a reroll here in case we hit another screwdriver. So the question is, do I buy an item and reroll with three slots, or reroll now because then I could buy the screwdriver if one shows up? I think I'm going to reroll now. We are guaranteed at least one weapon. Um... Going to lock the cake, buy the dynamite, and throw in one more reroll, see if we can find a screwdriver to lock. Like I said, because tools is such a small... get to blow those all up, which is kind of fun. Such a small weapon set, there's only two of them. We're extremely likely to roll screwdrivers when we roll weapons, because we're both likely to roll weapons we already have, and likely to roll weapons of a type we have, so we are very likely to roll. Every roll is very likely to include screwdrivers, especially whenever we're rolling in a shop with guaranteed weapons. Mostly ignoring the placement of my landmines here and just focusing on hitting things at this level, but we'll, later on we might want to change things up. I'm going to take the head injury here. I might not buy it, but it's really good because we are actually scaling a lot of damage off of our attacks, and finding max HP here helps a lot as well. Buy this and this and this, and roll. Buy the coupon, and I will buy the screwdriver, and then, in fact, I just want all of these again. Do I want to throw in a reroll here to see if we can lock another screwdriver? I think I do. Uh, didn't get there, but that's okay. I actually will lock Ugly Tooth as well. That's going to be a really nice one for us. Really helpful for dodging elites, Ugly Tooth. I think this actually is going to be a better build than I was kind of expecting. Um, we did get a little lucky finding a lot of HP items early, like that one broken mouth helped a lot, I think. We actually have okay HP. I'm going to need to buy, of course, other defensive stats, and we'll definitely need quite a bit of regen before we end the game, but right now I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at, actually. Like, our damage is not bad. The one dynamite also helps a lot with a landmine build. Uh, let's re-roll this, looking for max HP again. Or regen, gonna re-roll again. Really unhappy with, <laughs> with those rolls, but what can you do? I'll just take two engineering here. And here I'm gonna take two armor rather than re-roll. We do want to build defensive stats, of course. This is great, perfect shop for us, so I'm gonna buy everything in it. Then a zero re-roll, lock a bag. Do I want blindfold, or is that just too expensive for us? Obviously, dodge is worse on this character. Dodge and armor are both worse on this character, because we're going to have lower max HP, which means that they will be multiplying a lower number. But, of course, we want the defensive stats anyways. I think I am going to lock the blindfold. I, it's just a weapon, an item I like a lot. And like I said, the... 
the attacks from our screwdrivers are actually going to be a real component of our damage. You could definitely... Like, I, I would be very happy to see an argument where I shouldn't lock that and should really just be focusing more on defensive, on, uh, like, HP and regen rather than trying to build dodge. But I think we're going to get so many offensive stats for free, I really want to start scaling my defenses as soon as I can. Would love to get a little more income going, so some more harvesting would be really nice here. We'll reroll this again, I think. I wouldn't mind armor, but I really want max HP again. Great. The 9 max HP really helps solve all of our problems. Not all of our problems, but many of our problems. Uh, grab all this stuff, and then I want regeneration. Do I want regeneration badly enough for a blood leech? Lifesteal will also be useful, and I do want to build regen, but I think I'm going to pass on that and just buy the turret here. I can probably do better in terms of regen later on. Yeah, the nice thing is that my my weapons are hitting for a lot. And screwdrivers, when you're actually scaling the damage on them, are not actually a bad weapon. They have decent... Um, attack, base attack speed and damage. Range is a bit of a problem for them, but overall screwdrivers are like a fine weapon if you are getting the melee damage and engineering for free, which obviously most characters don't. But on characters like this or Cyborg, the actual attack damage of the screwdrivers is quite relevant. I probably do want to start building some range when I get some. Um, do I want to just grab regen, or do I want to try to build harvesting? I honestly think we're at the point where I'm not going to worry about harvesting, and I just want to start building defensive stats. I think on, on a character like this, we just need to get strong early, so I'm not too worried about getting my harvesting going. I will grab the coupon, of course, though, and sharp bullet, still really good, because extra piercing is really nice on turrets and stuff, and we will buy those. I'm not going to buy the helmet, because I need to increase my speed, and then here I will buy the lumberjack shirt. We're hoping for pocket factory later on. We'll buy the metal plate and roll. Screwdriver is great as well. I will also... I would buy the snake, maybe, but it does decrease our HP by one, and I really don't think I can afford to, to spend on luxury items. But snake is worth mentioning on engineering builds, both because a lot of engineering builds can kind of backdoor into being uh, elemental builds if you get scared sausage, and also because snake allows your level 2 turrets to apply the fire much more readily. few more landmines would help a lot. Obviously, the thing that we want the most on something like this is improved tools, so I will buy any attack speed that we see, like coffees and stuff are still very valuable to us. Oh, can I get this guy? There we go. Took a little bit of damage, but got the loot alien, so very happy about that. Um, wandering bot, when it's free, I think I'm going to take it here. And definitely happy with garden, definitely happy with plant. In fact, those were all great items that will really help a lot. Alright, so do I want some regen here or some luck? I think I'm actually just going to take the HP regen. I wouldn't mind rolling for max HP either, but I want to get my regen up to like 20. So it will be. it's nice to just start building that. And I can get some more screwdrivers. One kind of interesting thing about screwdriver is how many how many landmines show up at each level. It has different breakpoints, which you have to do some math to figure out. So, like a two level two screwdrivers is two landmines every nine seconds, and a level three screwdriver gives you one every six seconds. So every eighteen seconds, you get three plus one and a half from a level one screwdriver. So you actually get uh, a level three and a level one screwdriver gives you more landmines than two level two screwdrivers. Kind of a, an 
interesting effect of the weapons there. I'm going to grab the leather vest. Do I want the weird ghost? We've got nine regen, and we obviously really badly need max HP, so I'm going to grab that, especially because I'm buying leather vest. Then I'm going to roll again, upgrade the screwdriver, and metal is the perfect item for us because we're low on speed and need max HP. Instantly, I forgot that I had bought Weird Ghost, and when, um, as soon as I spawned, I had no health. I was like, oh no, what happened? But the Wandering Bot is actually pretty useful to this character. Normally not an item I like a lot, but because we actually do do damage with our screwdrivers, and they have no knockback, um, the Wandering Bot can really help set us up to hit things without them being able to hit us. One downside for this character is that, of course, because we're a landmine build, we end up with materials scattered all over the map. So while I won't go out of my way to buy baby geckos and stuff, I'll definitely take them if they show up. Or just enough move speed would also help. All right. Uh, wheat, great, sure, I'll take elemental damage, and the melee damage doesn't hurt, of course. And then this I'm going to... Do I want a level 1 max HP or just reroll? I think I'm just going to reroll here, see if we can do better. Um, I think we can do better than this as well. All right, unlucky, but I'll, I'll just take 5 luck. And then here I will take 2 armor. Armor, again, not amazing because it's multiplying a very low number, but it's what's been offered to us, so it's what we're... what we get to take, take the recycling machine, of course, and then we get to upgrade the screwdrivers, which is very nice. Buy a lemonade and a plant. Triangle of power, we lose percent damage, but we don't really care about percent damage because we are an engineering build. That being said, our weapons are still what's doing most of the damage rather than the landmines. So I think I'm still going to pass on triangle of power here. On the other hand, these two turrets are really good, and we get to also upgrade some screwdrivers, which is very nice. So let's start with the screwdriver upgrade, buy some turrets, roll again. Alien magic, one of the best things we could find. Also, defective steroids is really nice. Now that I have an incendiary turret, I'm going to actually buy the snake, even at the cost of an HP, because snake is so good with incendiary turrets. The incendiary turret is also going to be a big source of our damage output, because when you're building lots of engineering, it's a super high DPS item. I will say, I think that these engineering builds on non-engineering classes are where we're going to end up losing the most random random runs um, because engineering builds are generally kind of weak and also there's a lot of classes that just don't play well with what they want to do. As you saw with the speedy, classes that don't want to stand still are very bad with engineering. Going to recycle the alien worm. Even though it gives us HP, we badly need to have our consumable healing intact. I'll take speed here, and then I'm actually going to take 6 HP over 4 regen, because we need to make sure that we don't dip too far below, like 50 or so max HP. Bye, bye, bye. Um, my speed is positive, but I don't value armor very highly on this character. We already have a ton of armor as well. Obviously, Alien Eyes is much worse for this character than it is for other characters. Little Frog, I think I'm going to skip. It's already wave 10, so I don't really need more harvesting at this point, and I really do want to build dodge since we already have 19. Even though dodge is not typically very good on Apprentice, having 19 already means we're fairly close to getting good levels of dodge regardless, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to... We've already rerolled a bunch and not bought a lot, so I'm just going to save my money here. This Horde Wave shouldn't be too bad for us, of course, because we are a landmine build. Although, the Ribcage guys do always give you some trouble on Wave 11. 
But Screwdriver plus the Wandering Bot is actually really helping because the Screwdriver is keeping them, or the Wandering Bot's keeping them in place, and the Screwdriver is good DPS if you can keep an enemy in place for it. Try to pull those guys over some landmines here. One thing about the Horde Waves is that they do break your mines, like, immediately. <laughs> so it's hard to have enough mines triggering to actually kill these enemies. It's nice that I have good consumable heal and good regen, though, because we're staying relatively high life total. And actually, the, the armor that I have is really coming into play here as well, so pretty happy with that going to grab this incendiary turret which is great and then of course we take max hp whenever we see it baby with a beard is an item i actually don't hate on a lot of builds because it helps with lifesteal and interestingly we actually are building which we don't have so it's worse for here but interestingly on this character we're actually building ranged damage so the baby with a beard will actually trigger our damage sometimes. That said, we're not building percentage damage, so I think I'm going to pass on it. I will buy the snail, though. Roll again and upgrade a screwdriver. Buy a blindfold as well. Roll again, and I'm going to keep buying peaceful bees for the dodge, mostly. Do I want bait here? Percentage damage is still valuable for my attacks, so maybe I should buy bait when, when I buy it when I see something that's particularly um, good with it. The level four nuclear launcher, it's pretty hard to pass that up. We already have, already have um, explosion damage. We are building ranged and elemental damage because we're an apprentice. So I think I am gonna grab the nuclear launcher and then I will start buying stuff like head injury as well and I'm going to save this 200 to make sure I can afford the nuclear launcher try to pull the bait aliens over our landmines and kill them explosion size would also be really nice this might feel a little bit out of theme for the random random weapon, just like buying a random nuclear launcher, but it's an explos explosive damage build already, so I don't feel too bad about that. I also think that we could actually just continue to go all screwdrivers and do fine, but when, do how often do you get to play with a level 4 nuclear launcher? This is where if I was like live streaming, I'd, you know, take a poll in chat. Do we buy the nuclear launcher? <laughs> but I think I'm going to. I'll definitely take the medical turret. Pocket factory is great for any engineering build. And attack speed, we don't have much of, but will help with a nuclear launcher, of course. So we're going to buy that. And then we are going to combine and buy the nuke launcher. And... I could buy the power generator as well. We will want to build speed, so I think I will do that. Do I want tentacle for a crit chance? Probably not, but I will buy vigilante ring. That will help fix our percent damage as well. And I guess I actually will buy the tentacle. That will give us some extra healing. And crit chance is very good, of course, with the high damage of the nuclear launcher. We've ended up with a lot of turrets, like a lot of constructs in this particular build, so very happy with that. I did give up one one point of engineering from the synergy by picking up the nuclear launcher here. This certainly won't win the run by itself, although once I start building up a little more attack speed and percent damage, it will be very valuable to us. But we are still relying quite heavily on our turrets, on our constructs, on our landmines, so. I think this is still mostly a landmine build, just with a with a nuclear launcher in tow. Staying near my medical turret to try to stay alive. Also fun having a nuclear launcher going into a horde wave. 
All right, we'll recycle this, of course, and then here. I probably just want to buy max HP. If this were any other character, I would just take 9% dodge, go up to 60% dodge as soon as I could. And maybe I should still do that. 52 HP isn't awful. It's not great, but for this this point in the game, I think I am just going to take the level 3 dodge, because getting up to 60% dodge will help a lot. Let's buy this, and I will buy the clover ahead of the power generator. All right, I can afford both, so I'll just buy both. Now we want to prioritize speed, of course, and then, of course, all, uh, max HP as well. But because we get all of our damage from just being an apprentice, one of the really nice things about playing apprentice is that you get to focus on defensive stats very heavily in the shops. Even more so with an engineering build, because then you don't need to, mostly don't need to buy attack speed, percent damage, and so on, which you would for a damage apprentice. Horde on wave 14 is, of course, always tricky because all of the horde enemies are going to block you from killing the summons. But with a nuclear launcher landmine build, we're okay because we have so much AoE wave clear. Not to mention just the amount of work that our incendiary turrets and normal turrets are doing and the pocket factory and so on. We also have the pocket factory lumberjack shirt combo, so we're generating turrets, and then those turrets are generating turrets. I'll take the pickup range when it's free, and then here I'm going to reroll. We can definitely get a level 2 or better upgrade here. Do I want crit chance just to try to build more healing? I think I'm going to pass on that and roll looking for something better. We didn't get there, but I guess I'll just take two armor. And we actually got lucky because now this stone skin, which I was kind of hoping we would find, um, gives us 9 HP from all of our armor. Excellent item, stone skin. And then Extra Stomach will also basically fix the HP problems for this build, so that's great. And let's lock in this other screwdriver, go into wave 15. That's one of the best items you can find on Apprentice, because it gives you so much max HP, it removes all the downsides of the character. I've really been enjoying these random random runs. It makes you like look at the game a different way, and I like doing that. Um, I hope that you've been enjoying watching them. And of course, if you have, I should also mention it helps me out a ton if you take just a moment to like the video and leave a comment. It uh, doesn't really matter what it is. Tell me your favorite snack food. Um, I am basic and love potato chips. Uh, but just doing that helps us out a ton with search ranking and algorithmic ranking. So if you want to help out any small creators on YouTube, hitting like, leaving a comment, that's the way to do it. <laughs> it always annoys me that I have to spend a portion of these videos shilling, but that's, you know, you got to play the game that's in front of you. I am going to recycle this, actually, because I don't want to lose HP here. But I will take regeneration, that's great. Enemy move speed actually matters less for this character than some, but I think I'm still not going to take Alien Baby. Uh, I might consider it more if we didn't have Stone Skin and Extra Stomach, but as is, I think we're going to avoid taking that and putting myself in danger. Torture is interesting here, so this will prevent us from regenerating any other way, but it does give us quite a lot of max HP, so I think I'm just going to buy that and stop buying regen. Our consumable healing is also a pretty important portion of our healing, as is our tentacle, but the torture was is just going to heal so much, and getting my max HP up to a decent value for free like that helps a lot. Then I'm going to not buy the helmet, even though, well, it's 1 HP at the cost of 2% damage, 1 HP and 1 armor for 2% speed and 2% damage, because I have both Power Generator and Stone Skin. I think I will buy it here, and then just look be on the lookout for speed as well. Gonna not buy the Garden, because we don't need consumables anymore. Roll again, and Tractor, I think, is... If I had the money for it now, I would buy it, but I'm not going to lock it going into Wave 16.
basically at this point I'm looking for armor, dodge, and um, speed. Because all of those give me other stats. Which is one reason I like power generator and stone skin and items like that so much, is not only are they just like efficient often in terms of how many stats they give you, they also make it better to buy other stats, which makes your shops much more efficient. I think is is kind of a tough way to look at it, but basically the fewer stats you have to buy, the better your shops are going to be. Like the fewer different stats you have to buy, the better your shops are going to be. So by making by having those items make you need to buy fewer different stats, you gain a lot of value in your shops. Luck is good, although we don't really heal off consumables anymore, so I'm actually just going to pass on the bowler hat, and then here I'm going to take this dodge, try to get dodge capped. I will definitely buy move speed and engineering, that's excellent. Roll again, um, move speed for sure, roll again. Explosion size, this is the best thing that we could have found, and upgrading my screwdrivers as well. Yeah, sure, I'll buy another nuclear launcher, that sounds fun, and uh, I'm just going to stick it to 60 because we've already got stuff locked. How much are my landmines hitting for, I wonder? Looks like... <laughs> it's really hard to see. <laughs> Nothing's actually stepping on them. Well, hard to see and dodge at the same time. Alright, I'll just look it up in the post-game screen. But you can see that the screwdrivers are actually doing quite decent damage, just because they build up quite a lot of flat damage from the engineering and melee damage you build as an apprentice. And even though they only have 50% scaling, when we're getting one of those every level, or three of those every level, they basically get one and a half base damage every time we level up, which is incredibly strong. All right, looks like Landmine's doing 51 damage. I will take that. I'm going to re-roll this, see if we can do any better. Uh, I'll take some crit chance. That will help increase my damage output quite a bit, I think. So yeah, so the landmines are dealing 51. Not bad. Could be better, but still pretty good. Grab another nuclear launcher here, and do I just want some HP from the muscly dude? We've already got 90 HP, actually. I think I'm going to roll for anything that helps a little more. I will buy Peaceful Bee, even though it decreases my ranged damage. I, d I do want this dodge, and I want alien magic as well, um, just for the max HP. It's a not a super efficient way to buy max HP, but I think it's still good to buy here, and I'll pass on the helmet. Trying to DPS down this elite. Torture, of course, is going to help us like win this game by solving all of our healing problems, but... Torture, I think, is an item that is easy to overrate because it looks like a lot of healing, but what it does do is it makes your healing all over time. Um, so you can no longer burst heal using a medical turret or a, a garden or something like that. So it's much easier for you to end up in a situation where you have to play super cautiously. That, that being said, it's still an excellent item. Like, I, I wouldn't want to say, don't buy this item. Super powerful item. But you do have to actually look at the downsides. There's not not only that it might make your overall healing output slower, um, but that it also prevents you from healing in bursts, which is a real negative issue. Didn't end up with a lot of income from that wave, but did get our legendary, and it's one of the best we could find. It only has downsides we don't care about with the torture and armor is HP, speed is damage, and so on. So that's an probably the single best level 4 we could have gotten. I will buy this other Peaceful Bee to max out our dodge, buy the uh, extra luck, just to see if we can get better level ups and stuff. Plasma Sledgehammer, do I want to upgrade that just for some more explosions? I think that's kind of fun. I mean, it is just fun that the apprentice gets to build all these items, all these like late game weapons. Oh, I didn't realize I didn't have the money for it. Well, that that was bad. Um, 
gets to build all these late game weapons that just use all these stats you wouldn't have on any other character. So I'm going to buy that. And then I guess, do I want to like just buy a torch or something? I'll just go into wave 19 with five weapons. Obviously I shouldn't have combined there, but the issue that I had was just that I forgot I didn't do the math and see that we didn't have the money to buy that weapon. So fewer landmines here, but still looking pretty good. Screwdriver Apprentice is fun. I think even without all these high level weapons, we actually could have made it work and won. Like this, this has turned out to be a much better, more viable build than I thought. So if you are looking to get some screwdriver wins, uh, Apprentice actually feels pretty good to me. Like, this this feels like a good way to go for wins with Screwdriver. Because the main downside of Screwdriver is that you need all of the different stats to scale. And Apprentice gives you all the, all the different stats. Obviously, I think we've gotten a little lucky with some things here, but the... The overall thing, I think, has worked out really well for this character and this build. So I would actually highly recommend Screwdriver Apprentice. I might need to move it up in my tier list a little bit. Kind of fun to discover that. Recycle that, of course, because we're going into the last wave. Roll again. We could just take one armor and one health. I'm just going to take 15% attack speed. because That's going to be the most fun, I think. Grab the Plasma Sledgehammer. I'll take the bandana and the metal as well. Roll again. Um, yeah, you know, Strange Book w with Apprentice is actually pretty good because it just doubles my engineering from levels. So that's kind of a fun little interaction as well. If you are screwdriver or any other form of engineering on Apprentice, then Strange Book is actually quite valuable, an item you normally avoid. So it's kind of fun to, to be playing these runs and see things that I wouldn't normally see working well. Hopefully we can beat the bosses. <laughs> we'll say my damage output at this stage is not incredible. But our defensive stats are really good and we've got the torture for healing, so I feel like we shouldn't have any trouble really, even if I take a couple hits. We should have the dodge and armor to keep me alive. At this point in the game, I would probably rather not have the torture, because the faster healing, like the, the 15 HP is not a huge portion of our HP, although obviously that's just because we got extra stomach, and a lot of the time on this character it would be, but for this particular build, it's not a huge portion of our HP, and the burst healing would be more valuable to me than the 15 HP. But another thing, of course, to recommend Torture as an item is that, just like Strange Book and Stone Skin and so on, it gives you another stat that you don't have to buy. You stop having to buy any healing in the in the shop, which is means that all of your future shops get much more efficient. All right, so there we go. That was the Screwdriver Apprentice. I think this is a pretty fun build, and honestly, I would recommend it. Uh, I didn't expect to come away from this thinking, hey, this is actually like easier than I thought and more fun than I thought, but it is, I think, easier than I thought and more fun than I thought. Like, I've, even before we got a little lucky on some of the items we found, I actually felt pretty strong. I will say that the broken mouth that I found in the very, like, first chop helped a ton. So finding that is maybe a big deal for this build. But other than that, I felt like we actually had things kind of under control for most of the run. Getting to... Uh, the late game with the screwdrivers just attacking for a lot of damage helps a lot because normally the problem is you don't have the damage to clear elites or high health enemies, but the screwdrivers actually having good attack damage makes up for that significantly. So that does a lot of work. Um, all right, 
that's the build. And so we're now on a win streak of two with a 75% win rate, which feels a little better than 66%. Hopefully I can continue this. And as always, my friends, if you've enjoyed this video, do please take the time to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe to my channel for more random random runs. Modded characters coming soon. I'm not certain what order these will go up in, but I'm looking into which modded characters I really want to focus on guides for, so some of those will be going up either soon or already have. And you can check that out as well as other strategy game content right here on the channel. Cheers, my friends, and I'll catch you next time.